Walter's fifth annual Taste of the Wild. It's gonna be a little different this year, but we're really excited to bring you the event. We're first of all thankful for Raleigh Custom Homes for lending us this beautiful space for our video today. And before I introduce Matt and Ricky, I'm excited to say thank you to Great Outdoor Provision Company and to Greenfront Interiors and Rugs for being our sponsors today. They really made this event possible. So soon you'll hear from Chef Ricky Moore from Saltbox Seafood Joint and Matt Register from Southern Smoke Barbecue. And they are gonna talk about everything from time at the Culinary Institute to international flavors to why they really just enjoy cooking with North Carolina food right here in North Carolina. So we're so excited to bring you over to them and we'll see you in a minute. What's going on, man? What's up, my man? Good to see you, good to see you. What are you cooking? Like, oh. there's so many degrees, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I'm not doing my job because I don't have like, all these ingredients. Doesn't but. matter. L listen, Pampico County, crab rice. Local ingredients here, obviously, this is a dish that, well, first of all, when I grew up, rice was a breakfast item as well, yeah. along with, you know, your other starches like grits and that sort of thing. But, you know, uh, we had a lot of rice for breakfast and uh, I'm a big crab fan. Now, I mean, obviously I can't do nothing without bacon sometimes. <laughs> I know, right. I'm making collard chowder. Word. Call it chowder? Yeah, yes, yes, man. yes, yes. Um, this was kind of one of those um, harebrained ideas I yeah. had one morning in the restaurant. Right. It was raining really slow. And sure. we had just had a catering. Right. Had a bunch of collards left. Right. And I'm like, hey, this is going to be good. Yeah. Ham, collard stock, cream, potatoes, all this stuff, there is no, I have no salt. Sure. Right. Because we got brown butter. We, I use salted butter. Right. So we're going to do the brown butter. We got country ham. Right. and. The collard stock right. has got a little bit of salt to it. Okay, like I'm gonna talk about this this parsley here. Okay. And you notice the way I'm cutting it. I'm not, I have a sharp knife. I'm not chopping it, I'm slicing it. All right, so bunch it all together in a little, nice little knot and just shave it. So also parsley, um, Matt, for me, you know, it, look, it's, we're culturally conditioned, you know, particularly in our industry. And historically, you know, when you go to an old school diner, what do they do? They put, you have breakfast, they have yeah. like an orange peel and some and parsley. parsley on the plate. Yeah. You know, it's, it's classic, right? Yeah. For me, parsley is a seasoning. Herbs are seasoning. Yeah. They are not meant not to, for, for, for color. Yeah. Now, obviously, it's going to be eye appealing based on the preparation. You know, you want, if you're doing a salad, you want it nice and bright, you know, but it's a seasoning. So I treat all herbs like seasonings. All right, so Ricky, yeah. my ham and my onions are almost done. Beautiful, beautiful, looks I, good. I add, I cook a lot with garlic. Okay. I just love, I just like garlic, you know. Um, so yeah. I'm, at a stage, I'm at a stage now where I am, I've crisped up my bacon. That's gonna be a garnish, but also a, a, a starting base of the flavor. Okay, now save some of that bacon fat. Um, I'm gonna take it old school for you, bacon grease, because we, we had a can in our little kitchen there. We had, Bacon grease, fish grease, and chicken grease. So I just, I got the uh, fat from that, all right? And now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start to saute some vegetables. I'm gonna start off with onion. So while you're doing that, Go I'm gonna throw my potatoes in here. All right, all right. Cause I wanna get those potatoes kind of greasy. Yeah, that's right, that's you know, right. Um, and I think cooking really goes back to like what you've grown up on and what you know. Right, you exactly. know. Exactly. Um, that's one thing I really try to t take into when I'm cooking is I love to take things my grandmother cooked right, and then kind of do my spin and my take on those like things I grew up eating with. A good cook can't be too far away from the culinary DNA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you come from a, you're, you grew up and that's your, your origin. Mm -hmm. If you stray away from that, it tends to be something unnatural or it doesn't even taste the way you want it to taste. You know I mean? Yeah. I, I've traveled around and did a lot of things, man, but I rolled, I rolled right back to my Eastern Carolina country boy yep. growing up, you know what yep. I mean? A pot of beans and some ham hocks or something like that, yep. or, or neck bones. Yeah. I just added a little um, crushed red pepper, you know, to my vegetables here, and I'm what, what we call sweating them out to sweeten them up and extract flavor. Medium heat, real soft. Ricky, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and add my collard stock. Okay. Um, I usually add about a cup and a half, two right, cups. Right. Um, I'd love to do like a medium high, medium heat. Right. And I'm gonna add my collards. Now, these are Birch Farms collards. Yes. Out of facing. Most of the time, I, I, I am proud to say that if you eat a green, 
and our restaurant. It comes from Birch Farms. So they've been uh, really good supporters of us for a really, really long time, the Birch family. And um, in my opinion, they grow maybe the best collards around. Fantastic. Um, Matt, the best crab meat or crab comes out of Oriental. Now, folks from Maryland will challenge me on that. They will challenge me. A lot of the crabs that they're selling up in Maryland comes from us first, beginning of the season. And um, also the rice itself, all from the same area, probably uh, in a 40 mile radius. Yeah. So this is a hyper local dish, okay? For me, crab rice needs to be a balance of rice versus crab. So there's a ratio in my mind. Mm -hmm. So um, it's like, 50-50, let's go with 50-50. Yeah, 50 /50. Okay, I, yeah you know I, mean? I, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> like dirty rice for me. Like right. I want more right. sausage Absolutely, than man. I do rice. Absolutely, so <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go ahead, actually I'm gonna add the rice first. And I'm gonna kind of put it in in stages so that it's kind of fries a little bit. Now I yeah. haven't turned the heat up yet, but I wanted to kind of fry a little bit. So yeah, we wanna kind of turn this fryer up, get it kind of hot here. And so I'm gonna make sure this is all heated through. And now, we want to put this crab meat in. I'm going to put a little bit more of this, uh, this, this bacon grease in here. I think this is uh, important, aiding the flavor. I'm going to finish it up with this beautiful crab meat, my friend. And yeah, I'm, I'm generous. I got lump crab meat. Yes, I'm generous. And the goal is to try to fold the lump crab meat in here without breaking it. That's the goal. So I'm gonna, here's the last thing I'm at. Okay. It's just started bubbling right, right around the edges. Okay. I'm gonna add a little heavy cream. Beautiful. And see all of a sudden, it is, it's like a chowder. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Um, and this was, that was kind of where the idea came from is I love clam chowder. Sure. I love it. Sure, sure. So, um, instead of using clams naturally, we use a little country ham, sure. you know, and the potato. Uh -huh. Um, I don't think there's anything that we cook that I don't walk by right. and taste. Sure. But that ingredient right there is the one ingredient I think people at home don't use enough of. It's salt. Absolutely. I understand. Uh, don't make it too salty. You know, there's a level of confidence that I think mm. people miss. Yeah. You know, that's all, you know, you, you, you're so concerned about making it too salty and it, it cripples you. And you see, know. we use, and there's different, there's so many different types, you know. Right, right. You know, we use Sea Love Sea Salt out, right. of, out of Wilmington. Right. That's Wrightsville right. Beach. Right. Um, but it's just according, like, you know, everyday salt and then sure. finishing salts and those kind right. of, like a lot of people with a steak. Yeah. They cook a steak right. and they don't salt their steak afterwards. Right. When they, even when they slice it. Yeah. yeah. Then that's when you put your, you know, and that's, Absolutely. you always have people say, well, what can I do to be better at home? Well, taste your food. Taste it. And add salt. Absolutely. And, you then, know. and then make sure you buy things as local as possible. For me, man, my, my business model, salt box, wouldn't, wouldn't be if it wasn't for North Carolina fishermen. Yeah. And I speak and preach about that. You know, um, I think uh, there's, a, 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 there's a lot of fishermen down there, man, who are struggling. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I try my best, particularly right now, to buy as much as I can all the time you know so right. North Carolina seafood North Carolina fishermen we got to yeah. celebrate that well and the, and the farmers and growers in North yeah, Carolina yes. are pretty amazing so listen I'm gonna give it sprinkle my, my my garnishes if you will okay you know what I mean a little scallion right on top okay, man so, that is that's so beautiful this is a uh, Pamlico County in a skillet absolutely man but it's you Ricky yeah that's you yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah, one yeah, of the cool yeah, yeah, things yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I love about you is I can look at a picture or something and I know, hey, that's Ricky Moore. Right. This is Matt Register. I don't always cook pretty food. Right. But it's always soulful. Right. And I think right. when you cook from the soul, people know it. All right, now we're heading out back. Let's go see what Chuck from Great Outdoor Provision Company is up to. I think he's got a whole camping set up back there. Chuck? Well, hello, Anne Monique. How's it going? And welcome to our campsite. We're Thank just you. Tickled to have you here. This is cool how you set up this campsite right out here. Well, it's a delightful day, and has been part of our backyard to state park initiative. So oh. it was perfect. 
kind cool. of a backyard scene. Well, so. I'm going to ask you more about that, but first I want to yeah. hear a little bit about why Great Outdoor Provision Company has been a part of Taste of the Wild for so many years. Ah, well, yes. Well, Taste of the Wild. Well, I think it's been at least four years where, where when Walter came to us with this concept, it, it delighted us really. Yeah. It does such a good job of celebrating local businesses, restaurants, artisans that we have in the Triangle. Um, delightful food range of uh, hosts that we've been a part of. And, and, and when, when they mentioned that they'd have Ricky and Matt here, uh, we just couldn't turn it down. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, it's, uh, it's been special. It's been fun to see it develop over the years as well. Yeah, well, and it's cool. I, I feel like it's, it's interesting to me how food and getting people in the outdoors and kind of making those connections to people seems like such a part of your brand as well. Well, it is. At first, one would think of us as strictly like freeze-dried ice cream sandwiches or something like uh -huh. that, you know, but <laughs> we've evolved over the years. We yeah. have a lot of foodies within our company yeah. and uh, we've expanded our kitchen collection uh -huh. quite a bit, not uh -huh. quite at the level of Southern Smoke or Saltbuck Seafood. They could but, probably do something with it though. Those guys, yeah. can, you know, they're, they're joint guys, you know? Yeah, so yeah. Now, now this, you know, the solo stove that we have out with us, this two burner Primus stove that we have, it really does extend the kitchen outdoors. In fact, we're finding a lot of families that have added it to their, their backyard scene. Yeah. Uh, so that's been fun. Yeah. Yeah. And how does that also extend to the, um, the program you were talking to me about, about the parks? Ah, so our Get Camping program um, has evolved from our Get Hiking program. So uh -huh. a number of years ago, we, we began leading hikes through our friends at Get Going NC. Yeah. And those hikes opened our eyes to see how many people, particularly here in the Triangle, are interested in hiking, being outdoors, but may not know exactly where to go or how to start or what right. gear to have. So in the camping aspect, we said, what if we provided a full featured tent, sleeping pads, chairs, stove, and, and made it available where someone could show up at a campsite and have all of that ready and available yeah. to be somewhat concierge turnkey. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how Get Camping began. And uh, this fall, we will take our Get Camping on the road. We have three state parks designated. Uh, we'll be at Falls Lake, uh -huh. we'll be at some point in later fall at Hanging Rock, and we'll also have some plans to be at Morrow Mountain State Park. Cool. So trying to be a little bit across this beautiful state of North Carolina. Yeah. And um, excited about that, yeah. really are. Our staff are such experts, so when you're in the store uh, and you're trying to figure out how to go camping, they can get you out the door successfully with that program or if you're interested in purchasing these items and using independent of get camping right. we certainly take care of that too well even just as a resource for knowing where to go or what time of year is when, when's best like I know we've, we've just talked to you guys for that camping story we did yes. last September um, you know everyone's just so knowledgeable that if you just want to plan a trip you can just ask somebody too right yeah our staff are great about knowing where to go and you know it's fun we bought the bike we just picked up bikes and uh, Retrospect is a really fun bike brand and a lot of our state parks I remember growing up what you did with your family when you were at the state park you know mom and dad might be wrestling with getting the tent up but the kids we took off right yeah. we were on their bikes you're yeah. riding around the loops and you're and you just you have that open space to yeah. adventure in yeah it can be a fantastic digital detox for all of us yeah. it really can I'll definitely be going to your site or maybe sneaking in getting one of those campsites before somebody yes, else does. Yeah, so so our website will, will host the Get Camping. You can figure out where you want to go or if you want to choose one of the sites we pre-selected. Mm -hmm. Reserve your weekend. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Well, we're so happy to have you guys be a part of this again this year. Well, Great you're... Outdoor Provision Company and Walter Magazine, we, we have a lot of fun together. I know. So it's we, glad, we go glad back. to do it again. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Next, we're going to sit down with Patrick Casey from Greenfront. He's going to tell us a little bit about the furnishings in the house. Hi, Patrick. Nice to see you. And I'm so happy that Greenfront and Raleigh has been able to be a part of both Taste of the Wild today and so many of our other events in the past. Um, I was hoping you could talk to me a little bit about how you guys feel about like truly being rooted in North Carolina and your connection to the community. Oh, that's a great question. And, uh, rooted here and in Virginia as well. We yeah. have multiple stores. 
Um, but here, I think it's, it's great to have this relationship with Walter Magazine, especially as of late featuring. We've done it for years now, but I think people are taking more of a notice now. Mm -hmm. um, and all things local. Yeah. Um, and so it's really made our relationship blossom and using our advertisements to showcase other businesses and charities and builders and developers and so many things. They've been a part of our, uh, our shoppers and our guests and clients and also with you. So it's nice to see this wonderful collaboration coming together. Yeah, well, and it's so cool for us to come into a home like this that's kind of a blank slate and see how you are able to transform a space and rethink it and kind of like bring it to life for, for us, you know? Oh yeah, and this one was easy. Uh, it kind of reminds me a lot when I lived in Florida. So this indoor-outdoor living is just wonderful. They've got everything you can imagine from the pool to the hot tub to the fireplace, uh, the kitchen behind us. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just love it so much. It made furnishing this space so easy. Yeah. Um, so we have just wonderful things that the way we furnished it out here uh, would be the same. It would the same kind of furnishings and look would be in the interior as well. So it just flows once these beautiful doors are opened wide up. You just go from one to the other. And so we borrowed from the texture and color of the ceiling in here, which is a natural stain color, which we incorporated here in the for tan and textured weaves and uh, grass clouds and jute um, and just paired it up with a lot of off-white and navy and cream accents. But yeah, no, I really like how you kind of pull the tones from inside because I think sometimes when you have a space that's really hard to figure out how do you get this to connect to this to connect to that and have it all flow together. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, again, it was easy here from the open floor plans that Raleigh Custom Homes uses, uh, but the best way to do it is just to keep that same template mm -hmm. throughout the first floor. Um, borrow from you know the natural materials they use, which we've done here as well with um, the indoor outdoor goods, uh, weather resistant fabrics, mm -hmm. um, and even rugs and carpeting, um, which even, they flow nicely indoor and outdoor. So if it's made for outdoor, doesn't mean you can't use it inside. Yeah, so well, I know person. for me, like I have kids who spill things and draw on things, and sometimes I choose to use like weather resistant material just to resist my children. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And the, the two vendors that I've used the most here today is from Summer Classics and Gabby, Gabby Home, uh -huh. uh, which is actually one company, but mm -hmm. people most, uh, especially in our area, think of Summer Classics as being truly outdoor, mm -hmm. um, and then Gabby being indoors, but now the, the two are kind of joined together. Yeah. Um, you know, these chairs right here can easily go into a covered porch or a right. three-season porch or back into the dining room. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think you guys did a really nice job kind of making this space feel warm and comfortable for us for the you know for the interview and for the videos and we're just so happy to have you be a part of our taste of the wild today thank you so much thank you all right now let's go take a seat we're going to have a little bit of a q a with ricky and matt well thank you guys so much for doing that cooking demonstration you know since this is all about taste of the wild and cooking sustainably in north carolina do you guys mind each both speaking a little bit to why you think it's important to eat local as much as you can eating local and buying local and support supporting local producers fishermen farmers is just the appropriate thing to do yeah. um, from a community standpoint uh you know from my background and how i was reared you know that's what was always the case so it kind of um always been like part of who I am now not outside of being a chef or a cook but I've always been that person who believed that it was important to buy things that are close to you um, I think also as a as a restaurant you know uh, celebrating regional cuisine or regional offerings um, our consumers deserve to know what it what it is what it looks like, what it tastes like, and who it comes from. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, that's, those are my thoughts. Golly, mm -hmm. you took all the like really good. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Um, <laughs> no, I, I do. I agree with you. You know, yeah. um, we have some amazing farmers. Um, right. And it's kind of that circle of right. where my farmers are buying a barbecue sandwich from me while right. I'm buying something from them and they're employing people by this circle, right. you know, and right. it's building up the community. Right, you know? right, um, right, right. I think we're really lucky um, in North Carolina because we do have so many, you know, really and truly, there's not many things that are not made in North Carolina that are great, great quality products. Right. And I can't cook great food without great collards. Absolutely. Um, you know, and there's a level of pride when a, a squash farmer sees their squash on your menu or um, you're growing your own food and like from you know start to finish and, right, and, right. and i love you know it's getting to know the the growers and 
and we're passionate about food, well, they're just as passionate about about growing, about growing it, right? You know, right, as right, we right. are cooking it. Yeah, so right. we're lucky. Absolutely, you know, we're, we're really lucky. North Carolina, in terms of its, in my mind, a la terroir, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, is brilliant. Spell that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I mean, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I very, agree. I'm very prideful. See, look, mm -hmm. as a as a trained cook, we used to go away from our yeah. own environment and celebrate, which is not a bad thing, other cuisines. Yeah. yeah. And for me, I'm like, whoa, hey, my upbringing, the food I ate is important too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, Southern Smoke is a regional North Carolina barbecue joint. Mm -hmm. Saltbox is a regional North Carolina seafood joint. Yeah, that's what they are. Yeah, it very the, the DNA is extremely connected in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I just uh, I'm I'm pro North Carolina man when it comes to food no man because we, cause we yeah. got we, we got, got it all. Good, we got man. we got we got the seasons. We got the, the the area. We got the fields. We got I mean we got a lot of great stuff, man. And I feel like you know. Um, we need to be the, the voices. I want people to come here and say, man, I got to go to Southern Smoke and get some a barbecue sandwich because mm -hmm. Matt believes in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. He believe, I want to go to a place where somebody believes in what, the, what they're doing. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah, important. Now, even within that sense of place, I know you guys have sort of developed your own recipes and kind of your own takes on stuff. Do you have a process for trying to come up with a new recipe? Does it just happen by accident? Like, how do you kind of... Wait, or when you're coming up with a menu or something, how do you kind of come up with different with me, ways to do it? Mine is kind of very organic. I'm constantly looking for new things. Um, but I may go two or three months and no new things come to you. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. I kind of push myself to, I'm a big reader. I'm constantly reading. I want to learn more about the food I cook and kind of be better at what right. I do. But I'm one of these people where... Um, I'll ride down the road and say, okay, okra. Well, what can we do cool that honors that history behind okra mm. that we've never seen before? Food is interpretation. Right. You know, um, it's, it's bringing a memory or I may go sit down at a restaurant somewhere mm. and eat something and say, I love this so much. I want to kind of do a version of it, but still honor Southern Smoke and my cooking style, right, like right. what I'm known for. Right, um, right, 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 right. When I think about food and I think about recipes and I think about what I'm doing at Saltbox, you know, I try to stay extremely authentic, first of all. I don't do things just because, you know, stylistically what I am, I am a joint. Uh -huh. So there's no, I don't, I don't take this, um, this really ultra artistic expression, but more of a, um, a sure handedness of cooking, mm -hmm. you know, the idea that, okay, if you come to Saltbox, here's what I believe is authentic to this region. Here's why I'm doing this. Here's the reference point to um, this modern interpretation, possibly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that sort of idea that, you know, you can't be, like I said before, disjointed to your culinary DNA. Your authentic self, when you cook from that place, um, I don't care if you're making a hot dog, uh -huh. yeah. all right? If you if you do it nicely, mm -hmm. you know, it's, if it's a great hot dog. Yeah, it's just as good as yeah. a global yeah. foie gras served with some sauteur. Yeah. yeah. I also take inspiration from eating stuff that was jacked up when I grew up eating it. Uh -huh. You know, we talk about squash swimming in water. Yeah. Uh -huh. We talk yeah. about, you know, um, things that just did liver and onions. Yeah. 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 Hated it. Hey. <laughs> Hated it. You know what I mean? Like but, liver pudding, man. Yeah. yeah. Like, and now you'll drive, I'll drive. I'll drive out of my way to eat chicken gizzards and absolutely. and and liver pudding. Uh -huh. Absolutely. If you it's know? if you've got great liver pudding, I'll drive an hour out of my way to go eat it. For me, I, it, it, the, the the idea, man, is you know you know how people say, oh, I grew up eating, I hated it, or they come to the restaurant, oh, I don't like slaw. Uh -huh. You know, have you eaten their slaw? They yeah. don't know. Yeah. They they are they've been traumatized by, by their bad slaw. by their parents bad cooking. Slaw. Yeah. Uh -huh. By uh -huh. squash women in water. Uh -huh. And we say, and what I, my comment to a lot of people at the restaurant, I'll say, well, I'll tell you what, if you don't like it, come back up here right. and I'll give you something else if you don't like it. Well, actually, your comment about the squash swimming in water makes me think about what you guys were talking about, the home cooking versus the restaurant cooking, what you make for your families. Like, are there, like, restaurant dishes that you always make at home? Like, what are your kind of quick, easy, oh, like, God. I'm going to get things. buried for this. Mm. Uh-oh. We don't eat a lot of like my restaurant food at home. 
Mm. Like my kids don't, they don't necessarily want me to eat like cooked collards. Are you so. the Are you the main cook at home? Yeah. Actually, that's kind of a yeah. Like question. I'm okay with it. Too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Man, we cook. You know, naturally a lot of Italian food. Yes. Um, we cook a lot of Mexican food. Right. Um, right, right. But you know, I mean, we grill. But yeah. but me cooking like coming home and cooking ribs and no no yeah. I mean yeah. we don't. Uh, you know, you do a lot of chops and yeah. sauces and yeah. potatoes and that kind of stuff. Every once in a while, I get like real fancy and cook something. We we we, um, we do home cooking, okay, for real, for yeah. real, okay. We don't. There's no no big, plated, no, no big, no, 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 we, we no sprinkling or zesting. No, no, one pot dishes. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the grill. My son loves steak, but yeah, everything is good American home. You know, I. Pork chops, corn, and mashed potatoes. Done. Yeah, yep. yeah. Okay. I don't, and I think that's a misconception. A lot of people don't realize. Um, I will go and like because I'm on the road catering a lot. Yeah. I'll cook all this food, be beautiful food, be delicious, and I'll end up eating like a bologna sandwich and a bag of Doritos uh -huh. at like 11:30 at night. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Oh, and two, you don't want. Like you don't want fried fish after you've been in salt box all day. No, I no. want a delicious. See, here, here, let me let me show you what my go to is. <laughs> my go to is this. I like peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter got to be room temperature, and the jelly has to be room temperature. It just has to be. I like ice cold. I take my frosted beer mug. I put that in there and pour mm. milk in it. Oh yeah, uh -huh. I love that. Uh -huh. I just love See, that. See, but that, I'm, that, a, I'm a sucker for like a bologna my, sandwich. That's my go. Well, no, I go to those too, man. But I just and some about that peanut butter and jelly and uh, cold milk. That's probably my favorite thing is hot dog. Hot dog, yeah. like a bright leaf hot dog with some Bur good chili. Char charred up, charred up, man, please. Uh -huh. With that's with delicious. chili and good slaw yes. and mustard. Yes. And yes. like steam the bun a little bit. You know, you know, I, I'm I'm. Uh, Hot dog, a good, delicious drive-in style hamburger. But see, that's what you I love I mean? about salt you know box. I mean? Like, I love fried fish. Like, right. you know, you and I have had right. this conversation. Yeah, I can go and sit down at salt box on a picnic table, yeah. and drink a sun drop. Yeah, and have flounder and or fish and right. oysters. Yeah, I love beautiful food. Yeah, like yeah, one sure. of my favorite people is Scott Scott yeah. Crawford, yeah. and his food is so. Freaking beautiful, like it almost makes you sick. It's so beautiful, right? But like I, I also really like a fish, Dude. like a box of fried chicken from a gas station. Yes, you know, Open it I up mean, with some loaf of bread, some yeah, bread. and some of those square, some of those square <laughs> potato wings. Yeah, exactly. I don't want yeah. a biscuit. Like, I want a, yeah. I want a bun. You yeah, know what I mean? maybe it's just because we own joints. <laughs> yeah, like we're joint well, 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 see, I, I, Yeah, I'm pretty sure you and I, I, I was blessed, man, to go and eat out at these yeah. places back in the day that I'm very fond of. Like, you yeah. know, and the reason why uh, I started Saltbox, I wanted something very definitive. Right. When I was growing up, you went to one place to get fish, one place to get chicken, yep. one place to get the burger. You know what I mean? It yep. was very defined and yeah. they did what they did very well. So mm -hmm. I enjoy the idea of somebody taking something that I just grew up with and they put put so much energy into it. Yeah. I just love that. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. honestly, you know, and I know we could talk all day but um yeah. thank you guys so much we really appreciate you being a part of this thank and, you um, yeah, it's awesome. always a pleasure to talk to you we guys appreciate it. thank you thank you thank you so much for joining us today i hope you had as much fun as i did listening to ricky and matt banter about everything from hot dogs to north carolina seafood and everything in between i'd like to thank again great outdoor provision company green fun interiors and rugs and raleigh custom homes for helping to make this event possible today we hope to see you at taste of the wild next time